In this series, we've been finding out what the TV talent show means to stars and viewers alike. For that brief moment, the whole country is united in saying, wow. In tonight's final episode, we reveal all about the rivalry between the judges. It was quite hard working together. Pete and Louis have been at each other's throats. We absolutely clashed on the show, yeah, but he thought I was going to be a walkover. We go behind the scenes of the show that first brought Simon Cowell and Anton Deck to primetime ITV. Ready to go and give the kids some help? Let me have them. <sighs> they used to do these great sketches, they used to take the piss out of us. It was fantastic. We'll celebrate some of television's most memorable dance auditions. Diversity! And we all started cuddling, you know, these guys with tears in our eyes. We all knew it was going to be a life-changing thing that had just happened. And, pay attention at the back, please, what happened when the talent show hit the classroom? Good morning, students. Welcome to the Fame Academy. There were cameras in every room. There was no escaping. David. This is the talent show story. It's the X Factor judges. The talent show panel. Judge. You're not Maria. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Next. Jury. Who the hell told you you could sing? An executioner. <laughs> you have to know exactly what to say at the right moment. She's not just a dolly bird with a good voice. She's an artist who happens to be beautiful. All powerful in front of the hopeful masses, they have the power to make or break dreams. Someone had to go tonight. I'm so sorry, Jane. You're the guy who's there telling them that this is where the dream ends. It's tough. Ultimately, you're looking for a start. And if you don't get one, you failed. It's New Faces. Ever since New Faces introduced the judges in the 70s, they've been at the heart of the entertainment. Most of the records I hear these days, I can't understand a bloody word they're singing. <laughs> from unknown record industry experts to well-known entertainers and big-name pop stars. But what makes the perfect panel? I think honesty um, is really important in a panel of judges. Alicia, can I be honest with you? Yeah. Right, it was a complete and utter mess. The minute that you start worrying about whether you're going to be liked or disliked, you're going to be dishonest, you can't afford to do that. Sammy, that was totally boring. <laughs> Uh, humour is always great. For my superstar, I want to see Dallas, and I saw El Dorado <laughs> at that point. In... I'm sorry. These shows are like a pantomime. I really resent when you say that. You need your good fairy, you need your wicked witch. You need to have the tough guy who the audience can boo. Honestly, Nikki, for me, it was mum at a wedding. You need to have the empathetic, warm, usually woman in the middle who cries and feels sorry for everybody and goes, ah, oh. Come to... And Amanda was crying, so she obviously <laughs> liked it. <laughs> I'm a complete mess. I don't think any other judges had done weeping. So, of course, they loved that. And then every single episode, every week, I was weeping. So what's it like to become part of a talent show panel? Amanda Holden got the call from Britain's Got Talent in 2007. I picked up the phone and my agent said, oh, there's this new talent show, Simon Cowell's... I just went, yes. Literally, I just went, yes. As soon as you hear Simon Cowell, he's like... He has the Midas touch. You're going to be a judge. The other judges are Simon Cowell and Piers Morgan. And I went, oh, God, you didn't tell me that. I said, I hate Piers Morgan. He turned my life upside down when he was an editor of The Mirror. And I got up there, literally had a quick cup of coffee, said to Piers that he needed to apologise to me if he wanted to work with me. And he said I should be grateful to him because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have the fabulous life I have now. But I did say to Piers, I am amazed you're alive. The amount of people that hate you, I'm amazed you're alive. Because if I could have got away with it, I would have had you killed. Anyway, 
We're lovely friends now. I love him. Can I just, just say right from the off here how sorry I am that Amanda buzzed you. I'm afraid jealousy is a terrible thing. <laughs> But it's not just Amanda and Piers. Over the years, we've grown used to seeing the judges clash. Kelly, Kelly. you seem to have lost your swagger or something. Don't you ever say swagger again. <laughs> I can say what I want. <laughs> Pop stars The Rivals was the first talent show to make the judging rivalry a central part of the show. And tonight, the rivalry really does begin. Harmony. It was to be a baptism of fire for newcomer Louis Walsh. <laughs> It was my first show ever, and I was new to TV, and I was in between um, the pop legend that is Pete Waterman and the Maybe pop just... princess that is Jerry Halliwell. You. Suddenly, you got two people, one that had an opinion, uh, one would say too much opinion most of the time, and Louis, coming from a manager background, saw things very different from anybody else. I would pick you. I, I think you should go through. I Absolutely. really do. He's See? not going through. It made it impossible for me to make a group he so can't sing, Jerry. He, he can. can. He can't. He can't. He can't. Can. Jason Donovan. He was not yeah, a singer. He's not a singer. He's better than Jason Donovan. No, he is not. He Jason is. Donovan sold 10 million albums. We absolutely clashed on the show, yeah, but he thought I was going to be a walkover. He thought, oh, this little guy from Ireland, he's been lucky. He's had a few bands. I've yeah. had successful boy There's bands. Yes, Louis. My one. band's going to be bigger than any of your bands. I think I started World War for you guys. No chance whatsoever. Despite Pete's lack of faith in his rival's judgment, Louis's new girl group were actually pretty good. I can now tell everyone that they're going to be called Girls Aloud. <laughs> Girls Aloud would go head to head with Pete's one true voice at the top of the charts. Two great it... bands, but I can tell you the Christmas number one. Is it the boys for or is 2002. It the girls? It's Girls Aloud. I won the show with Girls Aloud, and Pete was furious. In fact, Pete hasn't talked to me ever since then. Pete does not like losing. No Christmas cards, nothing. Absolutely the worst 12 months of my life. Absolute uh, nonsense. By 2004, Pete Waterman had decided enough was enough, but Louis was back as the X Factor took the judging rivalry to a new level. Genuinely, the rivalry is real. Everybody's eager comes to the top. Sharon threw a glass of water over me. That wasn't staged, that was on live TV. Hey, I could have been electrocuted. I didn't like her that much then. We're friends now. But when Danny Minogue became the fourth judge in 2007, the feuding was no laughing matter. I think when I joined the show, it shook the panel up. No one more so than Sharon. It was quite hard working together. It's very different now on the panel where you look around and it's like... After three years, you know, you go there and it's, it's just very different. I, um, I don't quite know how I feel about it yet. It was a bit of a disappointment for me because I was looking forward to working with her and then was making her life help but didn't know what I'd done. Well, you know, it's kind of round one and round two and I think we're up to about round ten right now. It was very, very tense. I think at times it gripped the nation. It made great front page headlines. It's like that thing where two of your good friends don't get on. And you love them both, and you sort of just go, oh, why can't they? Why can't? And we've all, we all have it with friends, don't we? I think, why can't they get on better? Everybody tuned in every week just to see what was going to happen. Who was going to walk off set, you know? Were they going to be there this week? On previous shows, it had been experts from behind the scenes in the music industry who'd been given the job of creating stars. Now, the prominence of big names like Danny Minogue and Cheryl Cole showed just how much the talent show had changed. But that was just the beginning. In 2011, The X Factor introduced three brand new judges to its panel, and all of them were pop stars. Went to Simon's house, had a chat, just basically explained to him why I thought I'd be good for the job and that he would be making a big mistake if he didn't hire me. <laughs> I thought I'd be cheeky because I know that he likes ballsy women, so 
there and then he shook my hand and said, um, well done, I think you're going to be great. And I sort of walked out like, did that just happen? People have been waiting for my feisty side to come out in this show and here it is. You must be mental. I was really excited about doing the X Factor, but I have to say the most excitement come from my mother, who's watched the show for years and years. And when I told her, it was like it was the first thing I've ever done in my life. She was like, oh, wow, you've really made it now. I was like, mother, we've done quite well so far, you know. I want to be nice. Oh, girls. What? Karaoke night in Romford. <laughs> Gary Barlow's forthright opinion saw him take on the mantle of previous head judge Simon Cowell. I don't think you can invent a character to go out and do 12 hours of auditions and expect to keep this curtain up all day of being this, this person. All I've been is promoted from my couch at home where I'd be sat watching it and commenting to being on screen. And that's really the only way you can approach this show. But what do the panellists of talent shows past make of this new generation of celebrity judges? Talent show judges over the years have really evolved. To begin with, they had to be experts. They had to be masters in their field. They had to know what they were talking about. Now it's, how have the judges transformed this week? What are they wearing? Are they wearing a particular designer? What's Danny Minogue's hair going to be like? All of those kind of questions that are now far more important than What's that singer going to sound like this week? The problem is when you take judges that are actual performers, they like to be liked. So they're not always as honest as they can be. But when you take critics or backroom boys that only care about how much money are you going to make me, rather similar to Simon Cowell, you get a whole different animal in front judging. I didn't think he started well. I think he's too nasal. You've asked me, so I will give it to you with both barrels because there is...